All right, welcome to Time for Success here with Matt Barbie. It is great to be back in the in the podcast chair. It has uh, been a few months. Had a lot of uh, bi- a lot of focus on other business tasks, and uh, it's it's great just to be able to to get back on here. And we we're going to have a little bit of a different uh, kind of spin on some things uh, as we're going into it. But just to remind you, this is really a show about life and and business and reminding us why we do business in the first place. It's actually for life, to have the best life with the people that we love, doing the things that we love. And it's so often that we can forget that as being business owners and business leaders because position and power and money, it, it, it can lead us astray sometimes. So it's good to kind of reorient on that. But to do that, we have to talk about success principles in business. And so we're going to be hitting up on a lot more of that in this show. We're going to be uh, actually a little bit more discussion around that. But uh, I will oftentimes feature guests, especially guests that uh, I have a great amount of respect for on a certain topic. And uh, I have such a guest today, Sean Klaus with Warrior Sewer and Drain. Hey. Hey, Matt. Thank you for having me. Hey, well, thanks for being on the show. And uh, I, I greatly respect your, uh, your, your USP, your unique selling proposition. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit more, what that is and, and uh, how to develop that. But um, so first of all, though, I, I would like to know a little bit more about uh, you and your business. Uh, can you tell the audience a little bit more about what you do? Uh, we're a sewer and drain cleaning company, camera inspections and sewer lines for uh, real estate jobs. Uh, we prefer getting in there and getting the things taken care of before you have a problem, but most people wait till they have a problem. Yeah. The basement's flooded out, then they call us for an emergency service and get them taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for all that you do because your job is a messy business, and most people don't yes. want to mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Definitely, uh, <laughs> it could definitely be messy at times. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you'll go in with the sewer backups and – You'll, I mean, sometimes those sewer backups have human waste in them, right? And and you're the guy to call to yeah. get that taken care they of. Usually have, your... They usually have much of human waste. <laughs> right, it's so, right, uh, right. Yeah. yeah, so it's uh, it's an important job. But you you talked a little bit about some things that you do proactively, and, and uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that here in a second. But a little bit more about, you know, Sean Klaus, the man. You know, so what, what's your background? What, what made you get into the uh, sewer and drain business? Uh, I'd spent three years in the Army. I got out, still wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I worked a couple of warehouse jobs, worked security, didn't really care for that. And one day I saw an ad in the paper and I answered the ad, got hired, and uh, that was 28 years ago. And not realizing then that this was going to be what I did for the rest of my life. But, you know, here it is 28 years later, and now I own my own company doing the same thing. So, so you've been doing this for 28 years. So you've got some experience. You know what you're talking about. And, and so, when we talk about your unique selling proposition, which we'll get to here in a second, right? You know, keep teasing it, but <laughs> when when we get to that that point, it, it's something that you can knowably stand behind because you've got the experience. It's not like you're just shooting from the hip, hoping that it's gonna it right. catch some people's eye, right? Right. So, so, but again, bef- before we get there, tell me a little bit more because <laughs> you're a family man too. You're so you're a yeah. business owner, dad, right? Yeah, uh, married 30 years. Uh, well, 31, this come June. Uh, got, we got three kids, a 29-year-old, a 28-year-old, and uh, we have a 12-year-old at home as well. So, uh, yeah, it's been been a wild ride. My daughter was 18, and my wife just came home, and my wife said, hey, guess what? Uh, <laughs> we're having another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, though, so you know, Good. they keep you going. Absolutely. Now, would you say that that's part of your, your why, why you – do your business definitely is our why our our daughter lives on the other side of the state from us uh so we like to be able to go out and see her from time to time uh we try to take a vacation every year with where we bring both my daughter and my son are married bring them with us on vacation so we get a, that special time together but i also like to have more time where it's just me and my wife and our little one that's still at home be able to get away on weekends or you know even other weeks of vacations and such and to be able to do stuff together as family what was your most famous or famous your favorite <laughs> and maybe famous in your own mind uh, vacation in the in the past year? Uh, my favorite vacation is going out to Arizona, going out to the Grand Canyon. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. The first time we ever went out there, uh, you know, you've seen pictures of what the Grand Canyon looks like, but it doesn't doesn't yeah no justice whatsoever. You walk out there and see it, and it just takes your breath away how incredible it is. Wow, because I, I know you went to Disney recently, right? Yeah, we went to Disney, but uh, but Grand Canyon. 
was was even a, a bigger experience for you than uh, definitely. Disney. Uh, wow. you know, Disney was fantastic because we had to do all the Star Wars stuff. My son and I got to make our lightsabers, and you know, yeah. So it's it was that was a blast. That really was, but yeah, yeah. But did but but Arizona was the. Arizona was the biggest thing we've ever done. Wow. But uh, Disney's right. a lot. Disney's a blast, though. Yeah. But uh, making, yeah. you know, seeing all the Star Wars stuff, it was really made it. Well, for those of you who can watch the video, uh, for those of you who can't, I guess, really is uh, is is my 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 cup here that I brought. My wife bought this for me, and I just it, it's it's a great mug. But it says uh, Yoda best, and it has a picture of Yoda on right. on it. Yeah. So do you believe that it, it's it's really Baby Yoda? No, it's in definitely not. It's not definitely not Baby definitely Yoda. Not. The timelines don't match up, and timelines don't match up, okay. and. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. Because everybody, right. I think, wants it to be Baby Yoda. Right, but they don't know what else to call him because they haven't gave him a right. name yet. <laughs> Still doesn't have a name. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what's the name of that show again? Mandalorian. Like Mandalorian. Man, I love that show, though. Oh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a blast, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, going back around to <laughs> Unique Selling Proposition. So a Unique Selling Proposition, if you don't know what that is, it, it really is something that, that makes you stand apart. Some people might call it a market-dominating position uh, or, and, and it really is something that, that lets your prospects and your clients know that you're different than all the other people in the market. A lot of times people you know, talk about, you know, we've got great customer service, but what does that really mean? Really, you, you have to educate your clients. You have to educate your, your target market, your prospects, the community around you about something that, that makes you very, very special, something that gives you added value to the people that you serve. And I really have a lot of respect for, for yours. So if you can go ahead and share, what, what is your unique selling proposition? My unique one would be our warranty. Mm -hmm. uh, we, during the 28 years, knew there had to be a better way than what, you know, the, either there'd be the big boy in the company, in town or people that just want to go out and do a one-man show and, you know, just make a living. So we came up with a package and we put together a five-year warranty on drain cleaning. Okay, uh, a five-year warranty on dray cleaning. Wow. The next closest t company in town gives a six-month warranty. Mm -hmm. So we just feel like that what we're doing, what we're going to offer is heads and shoulders above what anybody else is going to do. So we're going we're gonna to stand behind our work. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So without giving away any of your secret sauce, <laughs> <laughs> so why is it you feel that all the other competitors out there don't have a better warranty? Uh, mostly because they don't do as quality of a job as that we're going to do. Okay. But they also want they want to come back to your house every year. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to keep charging you over and over again. So instead of doing the best job they could possibly do, they're going to do a good enough job to get them by until the next time you back up, and then you have that same problem again. You know, and if you got a finished basement and you your floors get wet, the carpet gets wet, you know, and that's going to cost you thousands of dollars to get all that stuff replaced. So uh, you know, I'd rather prevent that from happening for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty powerful because actually I had a, it wasn't a sewer backup, but a couple of years back had a, an issue with, with rising water or, or a sump pump Right. actually ended up yeah. uh, failing and walked down about like it was three 30 in the morning. I was just kind of up for an early morning. And luckily I was up early because I was able to start you know jumping in action as soon as my, I, I walked down the steps into my basement and uh, my Splash. foot got wet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now what yeah. you want at three 30 in the morning. You know, I will say though, I'm very grateful that it was not a sewer backup, right? Because <laughs> I've I've had those those experiences as well. People uh, call me up and you walking downstairs and end up being in sewage and they got a foot of water in their basement ooh, and it's like ooh. that's that's just that is unfortunate. So I I will say that that's that's a blessing. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, that was just storm water you're dealing with. Some but storm yeah. water, not so bad when it, <laughs> when it's all said and done. But uh, so so what are the things though that can can back up a sewer drain? Uh, a couple of the big ones would be tree roots are going to be cause a problem. Baby, okay. baby wipes, female, oh, yeah. female products uh, yeah. will cause problems. Uh, older plumbings and the cast iron pipes would be scale buildup, which is just mm. water running over a metal pipe over all those years. It builds up scale, which is rust, and then uh, the pipe's no longer smooth. So uh, paper goes down, hangs up on it, boom, next thing you know, you get a backup. Okay, okay. Now, do, do like water softeners and all that kind of help out with some of that scaling type stuff, or does that... No, really. it's still got it's water just, running through there. So yeah. no matter what kind of water it is, it's still water and mm. going to make it rust. So, oh, oh, okay. I know you hear this all the time and you probably see it all the time, but, but what about those flushable wipes? No. Right? It says flushable. No, they'll, they'll flush through your toilet, but they're not going to flush through your sewer line. Okay. And be really honest, if uh, the city sewer backed up and they clean their line, they run a camera up their line, 
they can also look up your line while they're running that camera. And if they see wipes coming out of your line, they can find you for it. Really? So, wow. they, you know, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year trying to keep their stuff going the way, right way. So if you're causing the problem, <laughs> they're going after you. So, yeah. yeah, none of those wipes, I don't care what kind they are. I don't care if this package says they're flushable. They're not. You know, they will hang, you know, those things are wet. They're like towels when they come out of the package. They're not, they're not breaking down. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of probably a pretty big deal for a lot of folks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Most people think they're, oh yeah, I can flush them, but you know, I can show you pictures of just hands full and bags full of stuff that we pulled out of people's lines because they kept flushing these things over and over again. Yeah. You know, you hit upon something too that some a lot of people probably don't think about is the tree roots. Right. So if you've got a home that's been around for a while and you've got some right. established trees, there's probably a good chance that those tree roots are, are getting your sewer drain if it's anywhere close, right? Pretty. You know, they don't even have to be close. Uh, tree roots can grow out as far as the tree's tall. Oh. So just because okay. the tree's not in your yard, it could be in a neighbor's yard, doesn't mean that those roots can't grow into your sewer line. And okay, you know, you know, so they just grow into the joints as the little hair hair roots, but when they're in the line, they grow grow up to build build a nest inside of there, like, essentially. Oh, okay. So then everything goes down, clogs up on that, and then boom, you're you're backed up. So you know, it behooves you to every year or two years having a camera run down your line just to to see. Yeah. And if you're clear, great. If you're not, then have somebody clean get the line clean to make sure you don't have any problems. Okay. So is that is that kind of part of what you kind of recommend in terms of that preventative side? Because you said that. You want to try to be more proactive yes. than just like waiting for the emergency. Yeah, it makes makes more sense. I can schedule it. You can schedule it. You know, whereas you know, if you wait until you're actually sewers backing up, now you're looking and you're scrambling. You need you want somebody out there as soon as possible because your basement's flooding out, and you know now you got damage to your property. And you know, even if you got you know even if you have sewer coverage, uh, sewer backup coverage on your insurance policy, which a lot of people do anymore. Most insurance companies are mm -hmm. you know telling people about it. It doesn't cost much, but it's still the damage that's gone down, you know, the inconvenience of having your basement tore apart and people cleaning it up, putting it all back together, you know. And, you know, if you follow a claim against your insurance company, you know what's going to happen next. Your rates are going to go up. So right. <laughs> <laughs> spend yeah, a little money and yeah. be proactive. You know, you don't wait for your car motor to seize up before you change your oil. You know, mm. you're spending the money to prevent your engine from blowing up. So spend the money and get your sewer yeah, taken care of. It's probably a great analogy for a lot of folks. Yeah. Well, I mean, the folks who actually get their oil changed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people don't think about that until, yeah. you know, we talk about it or until you actually have a backup and you start realizing how um, important it is. How important it is, how horrible it is. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So, <clears throat> so you recommend having it done every year or two, or at least it, it checked and, and camered, right? Right. So, now, I think you've also mentioned before that there's another aspect that you, you do that is kind of unique in the industry, too. Is it something to do with the, the camera? The camera inspection? Yeah, camera inspection. Well, you know, we, you know as a lot of companies have cameras in, you know, in their, on their trucks. Right, right. Um, but we keep a camera on all of our work trucks so that we can inspect your sewer line, uh, whether you're looking to buy a house, you know, yeah. to make sure that your sewer is going to be in good condition before you go jump in. Because I've seen, over the years, I've seen plenty of times where people buy a house they lived there for two months, and now the sewer's backed up. And we go out there and find out they had a broken sewer line. Right, right. Uh, you know, the inconvenience of that, the cost of that, and everything. So, you know, getting it checked, you know, at least every other year just to make sure, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, do it a couple, you know, two, three, four times over you know, twelve year time frame. If it looks good every time, then don't worry about it. But if it's, you know, you keep seeing issues going on, then you can address those issues before right, they get right. horrible. Now, a lot of sewer and drain companies, they don't necessarily do a camera inspection every time, though. If, if no. It, right? I, I, in 28 years of doing this, I, I've never, I don't work for, I've never worked for anybody that does on a regular basis. <clears throat> every time I, every time we clean a line, it's going to be, we're going to clean the line. And we, the way we know it's clean is we're in a camera behind it. Yeah. That way we know 100% of the blockage is gone. You know, we didn't remove just 50% of the blockage, you know, uh, or, or whether we hydrojet a line, which is using high pressure water to clean a line out, or we use our chain cutter. Uh, we want to make sure 100% of the line clean. So most lines in this area are four inches inside the house, six inches outside the house. Well, if you're cut, running a, a standard cable through a line, you're running probably a three-inch blade through a four-inch line out to a six-inch line. So you're only going to clean half the line. The, you, the equipment we use with the chain cutter it changes totally changes the way things can be done. Yeah, and we can run a six-inch cable or a six-inch blade through a six-inch line, so we removed 100% of the blockage. So oh wow, okay. And uh, and you part of that that extra quality stuff that you provide is just always checking to make sure it's clean, right? Yeah, that way you know you have the peace of mind. I have the peace of mind. You know, 
being we're going to give up to a five year warranty. I don't want to have to come back and work for free, <laughs> and you don't want to have the you know you don't want to have your sewer back up again after you've right. paid to have it done. So this way, you you know, we can make a recording if you want to ever see. You know, I can show you as I'm doing it, or if you just want to make, I can make a recording. I can email it over to you so you see that, you know, 100 percent is clean. So say you know I clean your line, and then six months from now you call me up, hey, my sewer's backed up. Eh, we'll throw a camera in there again and see what's going on. You know, truths take usually on an average about 18 months to grow back. If they grow back that fast, you know, there's some other other stuff we can do, but generally roots don't grow back that fast. Usually it'd be something, you flush something you shouldn't have flushed, and you know, let's figure out what that is and, you know, address that and make sure you don't do that anymore to avoid mm-hmm. any more problems, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when are the important times to really have a sewer inspection or have a sewer cleaning? Uh, the busy times are usually spring and fall. Okay. Uh, and that's because you know, people are buying houses and... Well, you know, the, the tree roots are growing. Ba- uh, growing tree roots. Okay. Tree roots are growing. You know, in the spring, and they're trying to go dormant in the, in the in the fall. Seems to be the pattern. You know, when all these years doing it, uh, spring and fall is busy. Summer slows down. Mm-hmm. Winter slows down, and then picks back up. So I mean, whenever you're buying the house, obviously have the sewer inspected. But you know, those are our busy times. So if you know, you can schedule things. It obviously makes it a lot easier on your schedule. I mean, because most people work, and you know, they're not getting home to five o'clock at night. You know. Mm-hmm. You know we don't necessarily charge extra to go over there at night, but do you want to spend all day at work and then come home and have to deal with the sewer back up and all that stuff till eight, nine o'clock at night? So yeah, if we can schedule something that makes the things a little easier on everybody. So every couple of years, if you've got trees in the yard, if you're buying Definitely. or selling a home, yep. what about if you're doing like a remodeling type project, like especially if you're doing like basement work or something yeah, like I that? Yeah, I talk to contractors all the time about that. You know, you know, last thing you want to do is, you know, remodel somebody's kitchen and somebody's spending, you know, $20,000 to have their kitchen remodel put it all back together, and now the, soup, the kitchen sink doesn't want to drain. Mm. You know, because they replace everything in the kitchen. They don't go in the wall and replace the stack, and they don't replace the, sewer, the line that's underneath the basement floor. Right. So that's <clears throat> partial, could already have partial blockage. You know, it takes them four weeks to put your kitchen back together. You know, now all your things that's in that line, it's nice and hard. Mm. Well, if you have me come in and clean that line before you put that kitchen back together, you know there's not going to be a problem, and you're not going to have a backup. And same thing with basement. You know, you don't want to spend whatever it costs to put a basement remodel done. And then have a sewer back up immediately and put waste all over that brand new floor you just put down. Yeah. I've seen it too many times and, you know, waste all that money. And <laughs> now everybody's upset and yeah. you know, more work needs to be done. More money is going out. You know, we're, for a very little bit of money, you avoid that problem. Yeah, because I've talked to a couple of real estate agents and uh, and insurance agents and contractors and remodelers. And, and right. it's actually come up quite a few times that work has been done in a home. And then shortly thereafter, because I mean, heck, even with a real estate agent, you buy a new house. Right. And even if work has been done to update the home, if, if there was really no inspection, that's especially a right. time to an, another red flag that, hey, you need to make sure that you get this checked out. Because if you know, especially on a brand new insurance policy and, you know, you have a claim immediately right out of the gate or any of that. And, right. And yeah. most time, you know, if somebody's updating their house in order to sell it, they're doing anything to make it look pretty. Right. Yeah. You know, nobody's, nobody's going to the sewer because nobody can see your sewer. So nobody cares what that looks like. <laughs> but, you know, if you buy a house and you're spending two hundred fifty, three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, whatever you're spending on a house, you know, you don't want a sewer backing up as soon as you put your family in there and all your right. belongings are down in the basement, you know, while you're trying to get everything settled. And yeah. Cause how many people that's where they, their storage room is. Right. You know, they, they keep all of their, their valuables or their memorabilia, all that stuff is down in the basement oftentimes. Right. And so they're, they're like the kids onesies, you know, <laughs> they're in a box somewhere in the basement. All your Yoda stuff's down there. So all my Yoda stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, having the, having inspectors just to make sure that you're not going to have that issue before you bought that house. You know, you make the seller take care of it or, you know, it's good to go and you're not going to have any issues. Especially in today's market where a lot of the inspections are just kind of being waived. Right. Because right? they're just like, well, we just want to buy the house. If it's going to get us the house faster and we don't have to worry about it just because it, it, people are basically, I mean, sellers are kind of setting the price. Right. Because there's so many buyers out there. Yeah, there's not enough inventory. The agents I know and I talk to, you know, there's people, you know, they'll have an open house on a weekend and they'll get 10 contracts on a weekend. Well, it's, yeah. it's you know, it's a competition now. Yeah. And there's plenty of people who have waived, you know, all inspections. Well, that's that's pretty risky when, you know, sewer backup could cost you ten to $20,000. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you're still looking at the cost of, you know, say the sewer line's broke. Now you're looking at the cost of replacing your sewer line. What is that? Mm-hmm. What, is that uh, what does that cost? So, yeah, it, 
It does I mean, typically at least a couple, maybe a few thousand dollars, depending on how far you got to go, right? Right. All to save 150 bucks for a camera inspection. I mean, right. right. <laughs> Thank you. I don't you know, sometimes it's kind of a matter of time. So right. if, if, if you're just kind of crunched for time or the, the seller's being difficult, it's still highly recommended that after you get that done, you still at least have the, the sewer inspection done because, right. I mean, that, that that's like immediate dollars. I mean, you probably have a roof inspection, probably should have all that stuff afterwards just to see, but. Right. Right. The, you know, be safe. Yeah. A few dollars now saves you a bunch of money down the road. So absolutely. Absolutely. So, so going back to kind of how you developed your unique selling proposition. So you've obviously worked for a bunch of folks. You've, you know, seen uh, other groups that, that just other companies that don't offer that kind of, uh, that kind of guarantee. Um, Was it something that you heard clients asking for? Did they ever say, man, I really kind of hate, having you come back every year or like what, what was oh, that? I've, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen clients that uh, have people come out every six months to clean their sewer line out. Well, yeah. I'm like, that's ridiculous. You know, if, if the sewer line is broke, fix it. Right. You know, if it's not broke, clean it better. Yeah. And I just knew there had to be, you know, I wanted to do a better job than what these other companies were that I've you know dealt with in the past. Mm-hmm. And so as my wife and I talked about me, you know, gearing up and getting, you know, thinking about doing this, I was looking at different equipment that's out on the market and everything and different ways of doing it. And we put the, we put a package together and it's like, you know, let's, let's go with this and see, you know, you know, we started out with us with a, just a two year warranty. I know it says only two years, but <laughs> everybody else is six months. And then uh, as we worked through it and everything, we came up with the five year plan Yeah, and just really wanted to you know, make a name for ourselves and, you know, show that it can be a, be a better way of doing stuff and see if we can make everybody else in, in the industry step up and do yeah. it better. How are so. people responding to that five-year warranty? Uh, we only fed it out for a couple of weeks, but uh, we've had a couple of people jump on it and you know, want to do it. You know, some property managers that are you know want to pro- be proactive. You know, because you know, just to be honest. I mean, a lot of times if it's a rental property, you know, sometimes you don't have, always have the best of people in, the, in there. That you know, people it's not their house, so sometimes yeah. they don't care about what gets flushed down the line. So when we came out this plan, a couple, several property managers want to jump on it, and you know, so we go in. We, clean the entire house. We run a camera through the other lines. We make a video. We give it to the property manager or the landlord, whatever, you know, whoever wants it to show them that everything's fine. And then if something does come up, then we come back with a camera again and show, Hey, this is what's going on. And this is how we can address dealing with those issues. Mm -hmm. But I talked to the tenant as well and say, Hey, look, you know, I cleaned your line, but we found some baby wipes in there, cleaning wipes, whatever it may be that could be causing a problem, you know, just let you know, you know, stop flushing those things or your, your landlord could come back on you and ask you to pay the next bill. So, yeah. Yeah. Keep everybody educated. Makes, makes things so much easier. Yeah. So then do you, do you recommend bidets? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I've never used one. So. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I guess they're not very common here in the U S but uh, I guess if you can't use flushable wipes, you know, and, and you know, you, maybe I guess that'd be the best, best thing, I guess, right? you know, if you want to, yeah, I guess you could, uh, you know, get I one mean, put in. I mean, yeah. there's some 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 very nice, you know, like stick it on your toilet or whatever, you know, and and uh, somebody was telling me about one the other day, you know, it's just, you just put it right there in your toilet seat and warm water, you know. I, so, but I, I guess, but that's a better option maybe than that. That would be a better option than flushable, than flushable wipes. Than flushable wipes I don't know, yeah. I'm just throwing out ideas trying yeah. to help folks. Hey, here. Yeah. That's all I'm trying hey. to do. I, I guess you could start marketing the, the bidet around here, I guess. I don't right, know, but, right. uh, you know, yeah. but it is definitely yeah. a better option than using wipes. You know. I'm just saying maybe that's an additional service that you can offer is setting up their bidets for them. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing out ideas. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> oh. So so it is something that people are responding to. And, right. and I think that that's key in a unique selling proposition, that it has to be something that, that people value. Right. But especially those those property managers, they're really they're, they're seeing that they're they're tired of having to make the calls oh. and their insurance claims because somebody that they don't really have control of, who maybe not doesn't respect things quite as much as if it were their own house, right? So they, yeah, they I mean, you know, them. I mean, yeah, them instead of you know them wanting to call me, you know, twice a year, you know, I know I can take care of this, and you're not going to have this problem for five years. Yeah, that. that takes a lot of stress off their shoulders, takes all their aggravation from the, off of them. You know, you know, they don't have to worry about getting that two o'clock in the morning phone call off that's saying, Hey, my sewer's back up and you're screaming at them. And then they're calling me and I'm saying, look, it's real simple. Stop running water and go back to bed. <laughs> and we'll be out there in the morning. If you don't run water, your sewer can't back up as simple as that. Right. But right. you know, everybody thinks 
uh, hey, it's you know, my sewer's backing up and it's going to keep flooding. You know, I'm going to go downstairs in a couple hours and I'm going to have feet of water in there. Well, if you stop running water, you can't back up anymore. Oh, well, that's, a, that's another little quick tip. If yeah, if, if your sewer's backed up, stop running, running the water. I was at a house just yesterday and okay. had a finished right. basement and the water kept backing up and come out of the shower, running across the bathroom, into the living room, into the bedroom, and they were having an office downstairs. Uh. And they're like, I don't understand. We're not you're running water down here, and it keeps flooding. I go, you're running water upstairs? Well, yeah. Okay, well, stop. And they're like, well, we're not running it right now. I go, I hear your washing machine running right now. Oh, no. Well, that's just the washing machine. It's still running water, ma'am. Turn it off. Let us solve the problem. Then you can turn it back on. Yeah. And But they were just kept running water, kept running water, and the water kept building up and running across. And, you know, it's a wood floor. And, you know, it's like, uh, mm. hello, you, just stop running water. And as yeah. soon as they stopped running water, they saw that the water wasn't coming up anymore. And they're like, okay. Well, I think that's probably something that a lot of people don't understand because there's, there's different, there's different stacks, or, right? Right. Within the, like what, what are the different stacks within the house? Like so the you different got, you got, you got what, your, what is a stack actually? Well, first of all, <laughs> so <laughs> everything in your bathroom runs into one stack. It, okay. It's a, it's a, usually it's a four inch line. Okay. It, it'll vent through the roof of the house to vent the gas odors outside. Yeah. And it goes all the way down to the basement floor, runs across your basement floor, runs out usually at the front of the house all the way to the city main. Right. Uh, there's also a kitchen stack that you're, it's a two inch line usually. It runs the same, th- same, just like the main stack. It runs out through the roof to vent the gas odors out there. And it runs down on the basement floor and ties into your main line at some point underneath the basement floor. It's also a laundry line. Uh, runs the same thing, whether it be upstairs or downstairs, doesn't matter. Runs downstairs, run across the basement floor, ties into your main line. And you have a floor drain as well. Does the same thing. You know, for your floor drain is usually by your furnace downstairs and across the basement floor and ties into your main line. So you got all these different separate lines until they tie all into the main line. Then they, yeah. you know, once it ties into the main line, then it's all part of the main line at that point. So yeah. So there there is a I guess a chance that your kitchen stack could be clogged, but your laundry stack's right. open. Yes. But if you see the water Coming out in other places in the house, it's a safe bet that it's probably that main right. stack. Right, and you probably can shut up the water. Yeah, regardless of where you see water coming up, the good chance to just stop just running water. Stop that, running the and, water because you know, it depends Call on where. Yeah, you know, it depends on where <laughs> the blockage is at. Depends on what what has to be done. So, yeah. But until you know that, just stop running water. If you okay. stop running water, you heard it here. It first. can't get any worse. You're right. You, yeah. you heard it here first. Stop running water right. if you've got any sort of backup. Yeah. All right. Otherwise, All right. you're gonna have problems, and your insurance company's gonna be mad at you because you're gonna create more damage than what you should have. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. So when, when companies are, are looking to create their unique selling proposition and when they're looking at starting a new business, right, right. or maybe they're trying to kind of revamp their, their space in the marketplace, uh, what I love about what you did is you kind of took one of those things that is, is a frustration for a lot of people. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people maybe never even necessarily thought about a better warranty, right? It right. never necessarily crossed their mind, but it was still a frustration that they had to pick up the phone and call maybe every six months right. or, I mean, I've not even heard, you know, monthly, right. depending on who's coming in and doing it. Exactly. And, you know, so you, you were able to identify that problem and you're able to communicate it in a way that is educating the market. That, hey, there is a better option right. if it's done the right way. Right. And, from from what I see, a lot of your your marketing and education is about the the fact that you do that extra inspection with the right. camera. Right. You you price per job, not necessarily the tool that you use, right? Right. Because you're focused on just getting the job the, done, getting, getting the, the job, getting done, the line clean, whatever. Doing it right. Yeah. Regardless of what kind of equipment I have to use, it's the same price. Where right. most companies are going to charge you different between the cabling and hydrojetting. Mm-hmm. But we're just there to focus on getting the line clean and getting you taken care of. Yeah. So whatever that is. Yeah. And so then you, you focus on that backing it up after the sale and then also letting folks know, that, hey, there are preventative options so that because right. you're in a place with trees, it's going to happen. They're going to come back. Right. 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 So it, you know, and those options with the tree roots, you can have, you know, either have somebody come out on a regular basis and just cable your line and hope for the best. Or, you know, if you go with our five year option, we clean the line and then we can treat the line. Uh, mm-hmm. We treat the product we use. Uh, it's, it's a powder, but when it hits water, it becomes foam. The foam pushes up into all the joints and kills the roots on the outside of the pipe. It keeps them from growing back into the line. Mm-hmm. The product we use, the company I, I get it from, gives me a two-year warranty that if the sewer was back up in two years, they pay me, okay. not you. So uh, on our five-year plan, you know, we come out twice. We, cl- we clean the line, we, c- we treat the line, then we come back again in a couple of years and treat the line again to make sure your roots 
aren't growing back and, and we run a, a camera through the line again, mm -hmm. just to make sure mm -hmm. that you aren't going to have problems again. I've had too many times where I've seen guys or seen customers tell me, you know, you know, I've had guys out, you know, twice this year. I, I had one lady a couple of years ago. I was there in August and she goes, you know, the, the guy down the street, he's, he's uh, cheaper than you are. I'm like, how many times has he been here this year? Well, he's been here every month this year and this is August. So he's been there eight times in the year. And I'm like, ma'am, He's got you on a oh. payment plan. I said, you know, what, the dollar amount I'm asking for you and compared to what he's already, you've already paid him, I'm less than half his price. I just want all my money now where he's coming to you on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you go with my plan, my, even my six month, one year or my two year or my five year plan, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Yeah. It's still far cheaper than what this guy is and you don't have to deal with this headache. Yeah. So it just, it took time to sit down with her and explain this to her that, you know, Whatever he's charging you, multiply that times eight. We're only because we're only in December. Yeah. And to realize that, you know, he's not cheaper than me. Yeah. He's more expensive than me. And you have the aggravation still of having that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes it, it takes that education just for folks help, you know, a better understanding that you're, you are an ally. And, and, and that's just all part of that buyer's journey. Right. Right. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a business consultant. I help people with their, their marketing and their sales and their customer development. Right. And, and so that buyer's journey and, and this unique selling proposition, all this stuff is, is stuff that we talk about all the time. And uh, that, that aspect of education is, is a, a big piece that a lot of companies, especially small right. businesses, miss. Right. But I love that you, you actually you know, take the time to, to walk them through and educate. You know, right. Most, you know, most guys just show up. They want to do the job, get paid, and they leave. Right. You know, they're not looking to educate the customer and how to prevent this problem from happening again. Right. Because they want to go back again. Right. And you now while I, you know, just like anybody would you'd like repeat customers, but I would I would prefer that I do such a good job for you that you're gonna tell your neighbors and your friends and family mm -hmm. about me and I get their jobs. Yeah. And then you know Yeah. So to that to me makes more sense than me come keep coming back to your house over and over again. Because eventually you're gonna get tired of me keep showing up your house. <laughs> and just like this lady, you know, he, she, she, it took her eight trips with this guy before she got finally got tired of him. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think most people would, you know, be more mad at trip two or three or four <laughs> instead of waiting until eight, but you know, everybody's right, different. Right. You know, it's just a matter of educating them. And you know, most companies don't want to do that for some reason. Right. Right. So, so you hit upon a lot of really great points, I think with uh, your, your unique selling proposition. And I love that uh, you, again, you, you drew out something that, that was a, a pet peeve for a lot of folks, but they didn't even necessarily know that there could be a better way. You know, there wasn't necessarily uh, the education available, and, and most people don't know necessarily all the things that cause yeah. the sewer and drain backups. They don't know how long it should last. They just kind of, you know, you just kind of assume and shrug your shoulders, right? Right. And, and so you, you found, you're able to find that, and then you're able to really wrap some some aspects around that and, and, and package it in a way because a lot of people might just say hey you know we our, our quality is better our quality right. is the best you know we do the best work well what does that mean right y you, you have know, to you have to stand behind your work then if you're right. if you're right. if you're saying you're the best or you got the best quality you know we'll prove that stand right. behind your work well and you do that with the warranty right, right? right. with our warranty we you know we're, we're willing to stand behind it you know if somebody else says they get they get a better job the better quality than I have well show me your warranty yeah you know, yeah. But in writing, you know, I've got it on my truck. I've got it on my business cards. I got it on my challenge coins. I've got it in my invoices. I got it in my email. Everything I've got, you know, our website, you know, our Facebook page, everything says that same thing. We offer the five-year warranty. You see it everywhere. You can ask anybody about it. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, the takeaways, I think, for other small business owners is, is to start looking at what frustrates your clients about the market. Right. about your industry. What is it that maybe you, if you do a little bit of research and you look at competitors reviews, even times right. you can see on there like, Oh, Hey, I have to keep calling these guys back. And I had my sewer cleaned and a few weeks later they were back. And you know, you can, you can look at that and you can look at the one and two and three star reviews and what, what frustrates people about the market. See if there's some ways that, that, you can, if you do better quality, how does that impact their lives? What does that look like? Right. 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 I mean, you're not going back to, you know, I mean, it costs money to go back to a customer's house and work for free. Right. right. So, I mean, you know, that expense alone deters right. me from wanting to do a bad job. Right. You know, right. And, and I've heard guys say stuff like, you know, I was in a hurry that day. Well, if you ain't got time today to do the job right, 
Mm -hmm. How are you going to find the time to do it right down the road when you're not even going to get paid to do it right? Right, right. You know, and most of the time, you know, if that's the case, you're just going to go rush back out there because I'm not getting paid. So you're just going to rush out there and get the line open and move on again. You didn't yeah. clean the yeah. line. And keep cleaning the line is the key. Yeah. It's not just, you know, we don't do drain opening. There's a lot of companies out there that don't want to do drain opening. We do drain cleaning. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's even, I've seen some plumbing companies that have some some similar uh, USPs to we actually make the job look better before we came in or then, then before we came in. Right? right. So they'll actually pay to, to get everything fixed. So let's say they got to rip out the wall. Right. They'll actually, well, I mean, you'll, you'll pay for it, but you know, they, they'll manage the work. They'll make sure that it looks better. So they'll make sure that the, the drywall's done, the painting's done. They'll manage all that. They'll wear their booties when they're coming in. Right. They'll actually maybe even clean the area whenever they leave as opposed to, because they, they get a lot of reviews or they see a lot of reviews from, uh, the the less quote unquote quality plumbers who are right. out there that are saying no, these guys left a big mess or they tracked a bunch of mud in or right. uh, now I have all this work to do they ripped a big hole in the wall so again they're looking for these these opportunities to to take their service far and above it and, and guess what if you provide a better quality of service that even saves people time saves people hassle and stress right they're going to be willing to pay for it, right. especially the higher quality clients, the ones right. who have more money to pay right? because they understand the time is money. Right. Every, every job we go to, uh, I got a box of booties in my truck. Yeah. We're in and when we're done with the job. Um, I've got multiple hoses in my truck. We bring, bring a hose in and we wash all the mess back down the floor drain. That's great. Uh, because I know what's going to happen is uh, if I just leave that mess there, I know the homeowner is going to wash it down the floor drain. Right. And they didn't necessarily run enough water. Now they backed up their own drain because they weren't running enough water. And now they're calling me going upset because I just left their house and now their sewer's back up. So now I got to turn around and go back there again. <laughs> so, we, you know, just because we want to make sure we're heads and shoulders above everybody else, yeah. we're going to clean up that mess, uh, wash it all down the floor drain, make sure that everything's gone, gone before we pull off the job. So, yeah, you're going to be as best as you can be before we leave. So, okay. Now, now, I, I thought it'd be kind of fun, so I looked up some uh, some fun, other unique selling propositions. Oh, okay. man, he's... he's don't, don't be nervous, man. No, this will be fun. This will be fun. So I thought we'd play a fun, fun little game. Uh, guess that unique selling proposition. Okay. okay? All right? So I'm, I'm going to read... I'm going to read a unique selling proposition. you gotta, you got to guess it. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one that you, you might know about. Okay. Because uh, being a dude, a little hint there. Okay. All right. <laughs> so subscription razors for regular guys. Uh, what's that company called? Uh, so I'm at Target now. Oh, they're at Target now? I think so. Well, I've, how do you get your subscription if you if it's at Target? Yeah. It's, not, it's not how subscriptions work. They start, well, they started selling them at Target. <laughs> I know that. I, I did it for a little while. Then I grew a beard and stopped using it, obviously. Um. <laughs> you, can, you can delay the shipment. Yeah. You know, you can go in there and delay the shipment. So right. Yeah. I did, and I did that a couple right. times, right. but then I didn't renew it. But I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave. Dollar Shave Club. That wasn't yeah. the one I was thinking of. There's a couple of them. That's oh. not, but that's not yeah. the one I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. But, but I the, think they were kind of the first big ones that right. made it subscription. There's races. one that's a, a guy's name. I can't remember it was. But anyway. Yeah. Well, okay. There's also subscription quality razors for regular guys made in a German factory. That might be the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> I guess German factory is, is unique. Right, yeah. So that's Harry's. Yeah, that's, that that's one? when I was thinking Harry's? of. Yeah, Harry's. Harry's. Okay, that's when I had had right. for a while, and now Harry's is sold in Target. That's right. okay. okay. Okay, Harry's. All right, all right. Um, oh, get a pair, give a pair. Hashtag one for one. Yeah, a sock thing. Yeah, I think that's a sock thing. I can't yeah. remember the name of it, but I know I've heard of it before. Okay, all right. But no, I have no idea what. No. All right, Tom's. 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 Those are those are shoes, aren't they? Are, are they shoes? I thought they were socks. Maybe they're shoes. I think Tom's shoes. shoes. I, think, oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Foot coverings. Foot coverings of some Foot sort, coverings. right? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. You, you, I'm sure you've heard this one. I mean, they've got a pretty good marketing campaign behind it, but email marketing for beginners and beyond. I have no idea. Well, I don't think I've heard that one before. No. MailChimp. Oh, MailChimp. Okay, right. yeah, right. yeah. That's right. <laughs> I've seen that, yeah. I think they're trying to say that this beginners and beyond – so it's it's simple to use, but yet sophisticated for the more sophisticated user. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No? no that's not? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see here. I don't know if you've ever played this one. This might this might reveal, you know, a little bit. But uh, a card game for terrible people. Card game for terrible people. Yeah. 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 
You're not familiar with that one? No. That's, that probably says something good about you then. <laughs> yeah. Cards What's Against it? Humanity. I've heard of it, but I've oh, not, yeah, I've heard the it. the game. I just never never didn't know they had a slogan there. But okay. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's it's for terrible people. I guess that's. I mean, uh, is I, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it makes it funny. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's humorous. All right, all right. I, I've got a couple more here. All right. Uh, oh, oh. Let's see here. What's this other one? Uh, uh, oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> The world's strongest coffee. I mean, I don't like coffee. Uh, I thought I'd throw that one at you. You don't <laughs> like coffee. Yeah, sorry. Death Wish Coffee. Death no, Wish Coffee. It has coffee. a really cool name, though. I thought maybe maybe there's a chance you heard it. It's an interesting name, though. Death yeah. Wish Coffee. Yeah, yeah. All right. One more. One more. Uh, I'm okay. going to give just one more. All right. This is, this is a pretty relatable one. <laughs> you might not like coffee, but I'm sure you like ice cream, right? Yeah. Okay. We make the best possible ice cream in the best possible way. I've heard it, but I have no idea. Who just guess, a, just guess yeah. an ice cream. Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, you got it. What's it really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got it. You got it. Yeah. So, so I think uh, you know, even with the subscription razor ones, I mean, I think Dollar Shave was really the first one yeah. to to make a big deal out of it. But being able to have that as subscription and and it's a pretty reasonable price too, as opposed to. Going to the store and, and buying some of those packs, or at least what right. they used to be. That's why I grew a beard. I got tired of paying right, right, for, got paying for it, right? Like just just grow it out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Although my beard trimmer died, I, it was only a couple months old and it died on me, so I'm gonna have to get a new one. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm getting a little scruffy. Yeah, yeah sorry. All right, and <laughs> <laughs> so um, so again, you know, I, I I think this is really important topic for most business owners because. Most business owners, they just kind of put out the same bland marketing. Hey, we're a family-owned business. Uh, our customer service makes the difference. Uh, you know, we do quality work. But you have to really, you have to kind of, you have to ask yourself, so what? Right. You have to ask yourself, what does that look like for the client? What kind of impact can they see and feel and experience? Right. I mean, I know, I, I know guys in different fields yeah. that actually do horrible work, but yet, you know, they, <laughs> do they, they stand behind it, but they, but they claim, you know, they're, they, you know, they care about quality and everything, oh, but okay. yet, uh, they, you know, but, they got horrible, but they don't <laughs> stand behind it. They don't stand right. behind it. That's for right. sure. So words, words can be great, right. but, but if there's nothing really behind it, right. Your if, if you don't really have something special, because people are looking for good, fast or cheap. Right. Right. And, and you can only pick two of those right. at a time. Um, and, and then most people need to understand that you can only pick two of those. Right, right. And most people right. want all three, and that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> and it, it doesn't really happen. But, it, you know, if you can make your unique selling proposition around those, uh, uh, you know, hint, cheap is typically not the best way to go because that's just a, a fight for the bottom. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you can if you can make yourself, you know, good and, and fast. Right. Um, or, you know, maybe, maybe you can do, you know, great quality, but maybe you take a little bit slower and maybe you can kind of, you know, manage multiple jobs that way. Okay. Right. You know, um, that's, that's one way to do it as well. But, but don't let yourself get trapped. You know, that's the big takeaway. Don't let yourself get trapped in, in just, what you hear from all the other small businesses out there. Right. You went into business for a reason. You went in business for some sort of passion that you have. Right. And you want to have a, a positive impact on people's lives. Definitely. Yeah. So if you, if you just sound like you're just kind of the, the same old, same old, right. Then there's no way for anybody to differentiate you. Yeah, you're the same like everybody else. You're, you're going to get that question every time whenever they, you pick up the phone and you answer it. They're going to ask you that same old question. What is that same old question? What uh, makes you different? Well, or, they might, but well, it, <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, it's going to be just like, oh, say, how much does it cost? Right, yeah. But if you have something that's really compelling, like, right. oh, hey, this warranty, tell me about that. You know, at right. least it's a conversation starter. It gives you a chance to educate them more. Right. And you start wrapping that up into more of your education. Right. And, and your marketing. Right. right via social media, I know you and, and you and your wife do a great job with that the education, the social media marketing. Um, but if you can wrap that all in and help bring people through that buyer's journey, through that education, and helping them understand that differentiating point as well, right? It's less of a conversation about who's the cheapest, right? Yeah, you know, you know? I mean, you know that I went to a job over the weekend, and we'd scheduled a time to be out there. And right about a half an hour before I get out there, the guy calls me and says, hey, you know, I've got the big boy in town c coming out, um, but he's going to be out here about the same time you are. 
Uh, maybe you can just wait a half an hour. And this is on a Sunday, and I don't know, generally work Sundays, but I was yeah. coming out for them. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already on my way. So for me just to blow off another half an hour, or just a waste of time, that's not going to work very well. And he's like, well, how do you feel about being here at the same time he's here? I'm like, doesn't bother me whatsoever. And so I pull up to his house, and the big guy's inside, and he's doing his thing, and I'm waiting. And he comes out, and I go back in. And we're in there a few minutes, and I'm edgy, tell him what I can do, my experience, my warranty. And uh, then he asked me for my price. And being my warranty is five years, the other guy said he'd give him up to six months, and my price was half of what the big guy was. And yeah. uh, he's like, well, with your experience and everything you got going on, why would I hire that guy? I'm like, that's why I wasn't too concerned about being out here at the same time he's out of here. Yeah. You know, and that never bothers me. I mean, I know a lot of guys – uh, that I've dealt with over the years, if they see another company at the at the house, they'll just leave. They won't even right. they won't even stop and talk to the customer. And, yeah. Well, I know what I can do, so I'm not worried about talking in front of you. If you want to be there, listen to me. Go ahead. You know, mm -hmm. So once you know, once I explained to him that he understood, and it was no brainer. So just because yeah. the big just because yeah. you have the big boy doesn't mean they're they're any better than anybody else. Right. Right. I mean, sometimes that just kind of means that there's a, a lot more overhead, you know, depending on how they're, they're structuring their business. Right. A lot of them don't even, if they don't have a very compelling, uh, a unique selling proposition, they have to spend a lot more money in branding. Right. And so their marketing budgets are, are really Huge. jacked up there, you right. know? And so they're spending a lot more money in marketing, creating a lot more overhead, right. trying to, to corner the market and they're way more costly, but yet the quality is still not there. Right. So yeah. focus on quality and, Right, right. You're you're gonna succeed. So yeah, yeah. You can get more of those clients that pay, stay, and refer. Right. Yeah, definitely. So, well, I really appreciate uh, your your time today. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, hopefully, the the guess that USP wasn't too too brutal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the, you, can the game show. you can market it into a TV show or something. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> we we should be able to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, if there's any TVD producers out there watching or, or listening, you know, and, and want a new game show idea, I, I just asked to be the host. That's all. There you go. That's, yeah. yeah I, I, you know, I think I could do it. It's your idea. Why not, yeah. right? I mean, I'm, I'm as funny as Drew Carey, right? There you go. No? Uh -oh. Price is right? No? All right. All right. <laughs> Logan, my tech over there, he's, he's yeah, chicken said. I guess he too. doesn't think so. Right? No. Well, well, it's worth a shot. So... <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thanks again, and uh, just so people know too, how do people get a hold of you like if they want to? Uh, you call me at six three six four nine eight two six eight six, or uh, website's warriordrain.com. Yeah, or you can email me at sean s h a w n at warriordrain.com. Awesome, awesome, yeah. And for anybody who wants to dig in into their unique selling proposition and figure out how not only to to create something that's compelling, but how do you wrap that into your marketing? How do you wrap that into your buyer's journey? How do you wrap that into your sales process? How do you wrap that into your customer journey once they become a customer to get them to pay, stay, and refer? And then how do you build your systems all around that within your, within your business so that you can create that wow experience around it every time? I would also love to talk with you. So feel free to give me a call at 314-441-5423. Matt Barbie with Time for Success. And again, thanks again, Sean. I appreciate you having you on the show. And uh, Please tune in uh, next time, and, and we're going to have another uh, compelling conversation. Thanks. Thank you.